For several decades, we have really looked at in America, there was a consistency with what caliber of bullet really caused the most deaths in the United States. And some would argue from the late 1800s um, until recently, it was the 22 LR. And, and it really, there's a lot of reasons why, and we'll talk about those in a second. But it has definitely changed. It has absolutely changed for the last 10 years. There is a new caliber that is for sure causing a vast majority of the gun deaths in the United States from homicides specifically. And really not just the most gun deaths, but even the most non-lethal shootings, uh, both lethal and non-lethal are coming from the exact same caliber. Um, a vast majority, and I don't think it's going to really surprise anybody, but it's not the 22 LR anymore. Now, before we get into it, I do want to take a moment and thank our sponsor, Jace Medical, for not just supporting this channel, but being the only organization in the world that will allow you to reach out to a U.S. doctor and get from a U.S. pharmacy emergency meds. You're you know, there are so many situations where you need emergency meds, emergency antibiotics, for example. I, I recommend every American have emergency antibiotics on hand um, in case of an emergency. But in addition to that, they also can give you an emergency supply of your chronic meds. Uh, those meds, you know, we've seen just in the last few weeks, a couple times, um, that just hackers have caused a supply chain issue with many people's chronic meds. This allows you to have emergencies meds on hand. Uh, but even in addition to that, you can get antivirals. You can get things in case COVID pops back up again. Um, and they're the only company in the world that does it. That link is below. All right, so what are we getting at here? Well, really, since some argue the late 1800s that the 22LR has been the number one cause of gun deaths in the United States and in the continental United States. We're not talking about off in foreign wars or anything like that, just in the continental United States, 22LR. But a lot of it had to do with because of its wild popularity. Um, most households have a 22LR of some sort and have for the longest time. In the 60s, 70s, and 80s, there was a wealth of kind of Saturday night special type of uh, handguns that were mostly in 22 LR. And most criminals would carry those types of guns. Um, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, it was the most common gun used in gun crimes. But that has definitely changed. And it was really starting about 2000, late 90s, early 2000s, um, that it began to make a switch in popularity of criminals really is with the nine millimeter. There's, um, you know, most violent crimes from about 2011 on involved nine millimeters. As a matter of fact, if you look at uh, violent shootings, whether it be lethal or non-lethal, um, 45% of guns used in crimes are nine millimeter. And that's a vast majority. I mean, it's most of them. It's the biggest piece of the pie is the nine millimeter. Below it would be a 40 Smith and Wesson had taken only 10%. Then below it's the 22 LR at 7%. Uh, then 45 ACP at 6%. Then you get down to like 556. Five, if you combine 556 five, with 223, you're only looking at 3%. And 38 special 3%. And then everything below that is like just kind of got a 1% piece of the sliver. But, you know, 9 millimeter, 45% is the biggest. Again, the next largest blow, it is 10% with 40 Smith & Wesson. And then if you look at weapons used in homicides in general, 47% of those are going to be handguns. And then 45% of those handguns used are going to be 9 millimeters. So um, it, it's just a vast majority of people. If you're going to get shot in a crime there's a 50% chance roughly that it's going to be a nine millimeter. And then the other 50% is everything else. Um, and it, that's just the reality from about 2011 on. If you kind of take a look at major cities like Boston, for example, 
What they're going to tell you is that 65% of their homicides are nine millimeters and you get into the bigger cities as well. So, um, New York city has got the same statistic. Kansas city has got the same statistic. You know, you can kind of bounce around whatever city you want to talk about. Probably 50 to 70% of their homicides, it's involving a nine millimeter. So, um, and I think a lot of it's because the, you know, you're getting smaller guns, you know, you get nine millimeter carrying mini, bigger rounds, bigger capacity, smaller guns. Before, if you wanted a pocket carry, you almost only had really a 22 as your best bet. So um, that's really the big change going on. And it started about really the early 2000s started to catch up with the 22 LR, but it was around 2011 that it passed it. But pretty much, if there's going to be 10 shootings, five or six of them are going to be with a nine millimeter and the rest is everything else. Uh, so there you go. Any thoughts or insight on any of this, uh, especially if you have any insight, uh, definitely be curious what your insight is. Uh, put it below, but yeah, right now what we're looking at is 22 LR has kind of lost the crown, so to say, of being the most lethal round in America, in continental America, to the nine millimeter. Again, any thoughts or insight, definitely put it below. Do want to take a moment and say most people watch this channel, not subscribers, click that subscribe button. It greatly increases the algorithm and our ability to get these messages out. That link is also below. But the most important part of this channel, we take prayer requests. So please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.